I'm Hunter Atkins, Chairman of the Board of the Bank of Nashville. Uh, I'm pleased to be the host today for the CEO Cafe, which the Bank of Nashville ha has brought to the people of Nashville for the last several years. Today's special guest, Carl Dean, our mayor. At the CEO Cafe, we try to focus on leadership and leaders in current topics. Last time it was uh, Senator Bob Corker. Today, in the political realm, we're back to the mayor and Carl Dean and Ralph Schultz, the head of the Chamber of Commerce, will introduce him. I hope the people of Nashville enjoy this series and this particular segment. Thanks for tuning in. Ralph, Ralph Schultz is with us, and uh, you know, people always ask us when we travel, how's employment in Nashville? And you know, unemployment's a problem everywhere, but you realize when you travel how Nashville has weathered the storm pretty darn well. And one of the reasons is the CEO of our Chamber of Commerce, uh, Ralph Schultz. Ralph's with us today, and we'll introduce the mayor. And so thank you for attending, and here's Ralph. Thank you, Hunter. And thanks to you and uh, Bill and uh, Bank of Nashville for your sponsorship of the CEO uh, Cafe Series and also for being such a leader in economic development. Uh, Bank of Nashville is a lead investor in the Partnership 2020 program and that is an important investment of not only their financial support but also their leadership support. So thank you all for being involved. The uh, when you when you look back at this summer and think about the the headlines about Nashville economically, you find out you find that the uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce announced that Tennessee was the number one business state for business in the country. When you look a little bit deeper, you find that the U.S. Mayor's Conference identified Nashville as the fifth fastest recovering. Uh, regional economy in the country uh, against the recession. And then you also find on a Forbes list that Nashville has been identified as the third most likely city in America to be a boom city over the next 10 years. Now that doesn't happen by accident. That happens by intention. It happens because you're involved in economic development and growing your businesses and attracting businesses. It happens because we have a conscious plan that we undertake over the course of time to make the right things happen for economic growth. And it happens because there's an investment of leadership and an investment of financial support to make those kinds of things happen. Perhaps the most important ingredient in driving this economy and this growth and this prosperity is executive leadership. And we are pleased and we are fortunate to have in this region and in this city a leader who has identified economic development, education, and public safety as the focal points of his administration. He is also the co-chair of Partnership 2020. He has been engaged in economic development for Nashville for years, and he now helps to define the environment and the, uh, the circumstances by which we can all experience prosperous growth. Just yesterday, we noted that as we compared against five benchmark cities, Nashville has positive job growth of 1.6% when those other benchmark cities are showing negative job growth. And so will you welcome war warmly the executive leader of Partnership 2020 and our mayor in the city of Nashville, Mayor Carl Dean.
you, Ralph, for that uh, very kind introduction, and thank you to the Bank of Nashville uh, for inviting me to speak today, and to uh, eSpaces for hosting this morning. This is a, a great facility, and eSpaces does wonderful work in Nashville. Um, having recently gone through an election, I thought I'd take this opportunity to reflect back on my first term as mayor and talk about where I see the city going over the next several years. Uh, my inauguration for the second term is actually tomorrow, so these remarks will be a little bit of a, a preview of that. Um, it has certainly been a very challenging four years for the country as a whole, and Nashville has not been immune to the economic headwinds. Shortly after I was elected, and totally unrelated to my election, let me say, the U.S. was hit by the most significant downturn <laughs> since, um, <laughs> since the Great Depression. Something uh, no one really expected when I took office in 2007. I think there were some economists who foresaw uh, some tough years ahead, but nobody saw us reaching the depths that we did reach in 08 and 09. Businesses across the country were forced to cut costs, make layoffs, and individuals struggled to make end meets, ends meet. Uh, the recovery has been slower and more fragile than we had all hoped. Uh, the bickering in Washington, D.C. and the economic turmoil in Europe have also been headwinds to growth. And I'm sure that I don't have to tell you that we have felt the impact here in Nashville, though we have done better than most cities in this country. Throughout the recession, uh, the unemployment rate in Nashville has been materially lower than the national average, but it remains far higher than it should be. Because of our diverse economy and prudent financial planning, Nashville has been better able than many other communities to navigate through these difficult times. Nashville benefits from being a leading um, center for several important industries, including healthcare, music, hospitality, education, and the retail sector sectors. But just like families in our community, we in the city have had to make do with less in recent years. Between fiscal years 2009 and 2011, sales tax collection in this city dropped by more than 10%. Uh, many departments have made significant cuts while meeting the increased demand for services coming from a growing city. Um, and I believe you have to lead by example, and we have cut the funding for my office at the highest level of any department over the past several years. Public servants in our parks, public works, water, and other departments of metropolitan government have done a tremendous job of answering the calls to do more with less. And during these four years, um, we have not um, increased property taxes. Uh, we made a very conscious decision as the recession began uh, that we had to do what families and businesses were doing all over the area, which is tighten our belts and, 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 and get through this. Uh, we didn't think it was appropriate uh, for the government to unbalance the books of families and businesses to balance our books. Uh, but as we go into this term, um, there are significant challenges that we will have to confront uh, regarding revenue. Uh, I'm not making any announcements today. I'm just saying that <laughs> This is the reality that, that we have to deal with, and I think one of the things that has helped us during these past four years is that as a city, and as a city in, in sort of the political climate environment uh, of this city, we have all been uh, realistic, nonpartisan, about how we approach these issues, which is, I think, in marked contrast to other levels of the government. Uh, we have to do the responsible thing, and, and we will. Um, there is a, a line um, that Bob Dylan has in one of his songs that I like to quote that goes like this. Um, if you're not busy being born, you're busy dying. And I think that translates well to cities. Strong, vibrant cities are cities that are constantly reinventing themselves and spurring new growth. As a government, what we can do is to make strategic investments that generate new private investments in our city. Because of the economy, some say now is the wrong time to be making these type of investments. But reality is we need to be doing things to grow our tax base more now than ever. Uh, the convention center downtown is a perfect example of this. It's an investment in the tourism industry, the hospitality industry, which is our city's number two private, invest, uh, private employer. 
When it opens in 2013, it's going to bring more visitors to our city, create more jobs for people working in that industry, in hotels, in restaurants, and in entertainment venues. The building will be 1.2 million square feet with 350,000 square foot exhibit hall and a 57,000 square foot grand ballroom. Our current convention center downtown is large enough to allow us to compete for somewhere less than 25% of the convention business. The new convention center will allow Nashville to compete for somewhere around 80% of the new convention business in the United States. Um, and the best part of this is, is the project is be, will be funded largely by visitor taxes and fees. Because of the financial structure of the deal, we're able to invest in the growth of a key industry without increasingly burdening our own taxpayers. And I would note, um, if you're curious about this, how's, how's it going? Um, I think the July, um, Ho Tom Negri's back there, get pumped in his hand. The July hotel tax um, receipts were up about 30%, 37%, I think, which is a real testament to the strength of the city during a recession that our hotel tax just went up 37%. So the project is exceeding, um, in terms of the revenue bringing in, what we thought. Um, also, we've already booked, I believe, over half a million room nights um, for the convention. We have booked over uh, 50 conventions for the new convention center. Um, and these are bigger conventions than we ever had here. Um, you know, we're bringing in conventions such as the Women's Final Four in 2014. Uh, the National Rifle Association, the NRA, will be here with 15,000 or more people. And, and that's very consistent with my public safety message. The city will be, <laughs> the, the, the city, the city will be frighteningly safe for, 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 for some time during that, during that time period. Um, and I think Nashville, frankly, we are in a position, and we should think big and dream big, and believe me, we are. Um, we, with the downtown convention center, the great Gaylord complex, we are in a position where we can host almost anything. Um, so set your sights high. Um, and, and think big, because it's going to, I think these things are going to happen here in Nashville. Um, already the Music City Center has led to uh, the development of a brand new privately owned hotel downtown. The Omni Nashville Hotel uh, will serve as a headquarters hotel for the convention center. And next door to the convention center and adjacent uh, uh, to the Country Music Hall of Fame, the construction of Omni is already underway. And at the same time, the Country Music Hall of Fame is doubling in size as part of this project. So if you go out the back door of the Country Music Hall of Fame now, you will fall deep into a pit. Um, and hopefully you'll be, there'll be salvation somewhere at later, but you'll be in this pit that is really being dug for both the Hall of Fame and the Omni. And the Hall of Fame and the Omni will literally be connected to each other and integrated on floors. Uh, when you go into the entry of the Omni, you are able to enter the Hall of Fame and vice versa. When you go into certain ballroom floors or public space floors in either of the two facilities, they'll be integrated together. Um, you know, Omni is a great company for a lot of reasons. They, do, they don't do cookie cutter hotels. They're going to do a unique natural <laughs> hotel. Um, they, are, they are very creative people who, when we propose this idea of, of, of having this linked project with the Hall of Fame, they didn't blink and they got it immediately about what a special uh, thing this was for, for them and for the city. But one of the reasons why they're really such a great company is, is they have a lot of cash. Um, and, and the Omni Hotel investment in this 800 room hotel um, is a private investment of about $260 million in Nashville. Um, and if you recall the debate on the convention center, you know, one of the, the, the arguments was why you shouldn't do it is that if you build this convention center, you've got to have a downtown headquarters hotel. And if you don't have a new downtown headquarters hotel, it's not going to work. And if you want to have a downtown headquarters hotel, you're going to have to uh, publicly finance it. You're going to have to issue bonds from the, from the government, the city government, to pay for the hotel. And we said, we're not going to do that um, for a variety of reasons. Number one, I don't think that's what the government should be doing. Number two, I think politically it would have been impossible to do. Um, and we just didn't want to do it. And we felt that Nashville, as a destination, as a tourist destination, as a convention destination, as a city with unique appeal, was strong enough that we needed more hotels, and a hotel would come. 
Um, and I was uh, very, very happy when Omni said, you know, we got $260 million, we can invest it anywhere, we can put our, we can put our stake in the ground in any city in the world, we're picking Nashville. So I'm biased, but when completed, this hotel integrated with the Country Music Hall of Fame will be the most unique, the most special, the most compelling convention center headquarters hotel in this country. Uh, and another example I'd like to give of a public investment spurring private development is the 28th Avenue connector off Charlotte. This is a project that I'm particularly excited about. Um, the area along the Charlotte Avenue corridor is poised to uh, experience significant growth in the coming years as part of the city, as parts of the city that were previously separated are joined. Uh, that part of Charlotte is right in sort of the heart of the, uh, the, the healthcare industry in Nashville. And I know there are lots of entrepreneurs here and the, if you're looking for a space, that might be a good space to look at. Um, but what's gonna happen is you have this area, West Nashville and North Nashville, which were cut apart by the interstate being built, where it was no longer possible to easily get from the Jefferson Street area over to the West End area. And so our city was literally and symbolically split, where uh, there was a division. And that historic division has been there for far too long. And the 28th Avenue connector, which was discussed in theory long before I ran for mayor, but it was something I learned about during my, the first campaign and I was really uh, attracted by the concept. The idea is that you bring together West Nashville and North Nashville. You connect Vanderbilt, Belmont, and Lipscomb to Fisk, Meharry, TSU. That you connect Hadley Park to Centennial Park. That you connect one neighborhood to another neighborhood. And bringing people together with a beautiful bridge that will be pedestrian friendly, bike friendly, public art, um, to me is just a great thing for the city to do. But I also think it has tremendous um, economic development potential because you're going to see more people from West Nashville going over to North Nashville for lunch, for dinner, to shop, and vice versa. And that is a good thing. It is a good thing when we become closer together as, as people in this, in this great city. So that project is going forward right now. If you drive by on, on Charlotte, you can see the work being done there. And I want to thank HCA. Um, when you talk about corporate citizens, HCA, who's this is going right by their parking lots, right by their buildings, um, could not have been more cooperative, had, could not have been more publicly minded. Uh, to, to work on this project with us and it's, it will be I think a, a great success and I'm anxious to see it. Um, we have despite um, the economic climate we have still experienced a number of successes in attracting new and better jobs to our community. Business are drawn to the growth and vibrancy of Nashville. One example of this that I would give is uh, Service Source which is a public company based in San Francisco that opened offices in the uh, Fourth and Church building, the old Third National building downtown a few years ago. Um, I recall very vividly in my first few months in office, they came to see me about moving to Nashville and um, said that they were attracted to Nashville. And this is one of our great strengths. They were attracted to Nashville because in their business, they hire lots of recent college graduates. And they looked around and they saw college graduates everywhere here. And they went out to um, Donaldson area initially with about 45 people. And they came here and uh, succeeded as, as developing this office where they are now up to about 450 employees, all located downtown, all young people who, um, uh, I don't know what their parents want, but I'm very happy to see them going out at night and enjoying the, the downtown uh, that, that we have to offer. And we offered them an incentive package to get the company um, to help with them get expanded, and I think it was the right thing to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating that they're going to continue to grow even beyond that 450 number. It's a it's a it's an exciting company. If you haven't been the Third National Bank building, if you can ever get us go in and see what they do there, it's worth seeing. Um, last month, uh, Hellspring opened a new 98,000 square foot facility at Metro Center. 
The company has begun construction on the second phase of the project, which will be 75,000 square feet and will open next May. When complete, these facilities will house 1,100 employees. Nashville's improving business climate is also evidenced by the residential units that are rising out of the ground. Obviously, the last several years have been very difficult to the residential real estate market, but people have continued to move to Nashville. People are attracted by the high standard of living, the great culture, as well as the comparatively strong job market here. I, don't make, uh, I didn't make too much of a big point of this during the campaign. Since I'm term limited now, I'm just talk about whatever I want to. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a transplant myself. Um, I moved here over 30 years ago to go to law school. And you know, I came here sight unseen to Nashville and enrolled at Vanderbilt and, and you know, was unsure how everything would work out in my life, but I, I met a woman who was a Nashville native and um, you know, we fell in love and you know, we go through this couple year period where we're having what uh, the diplomats would call frank and open discussions about where we're gonna live, whether it's New England or Nashville. And she's a Nashville native, and, and I live in Nashville, and um, it's, it, it worked out just, just great. You know. But it's, it's a tribute to the city that I think that people now, particularly when I look at my kids, um, I think every, each one of them, and I have one now who's uh, out of college, um, coming back and living in Nashville is something they want to do and is an option that every one of them really look at. I think they get away like we did when we were younger, you get away from Nashville for a couple of years and you think, boy, you know, the economy was good there, the quality of life is good there, people really are friendly there, and it really is an interesting city with the universities, the music, the entrepreneurial spirit. I, if I got any brains, I'm going to get back there. And I think that's happening. And I think you're seeing more and more young people making the decision about where they, they live not based upon where they, can, they get a job and move. I think they pick a place to live because of quality of life and interest and things like that, and then they get a job. And I think Nashville, in that sort of market, will, will do well because we have so much um, to offer. And Nashville has always been a welcoming place um, that, has tra that has attracted folks from across the U.S. and across the, the world. And this influx of new people has helped the boom in the real estate market and has helped our um, our businesses grow here. And just let me say as an aside, I'm going to talk a little bit about rankings here in a moment, but one of the things that really has, when I think back to the English only vote, um, you know, several years ago, which um, fortunately was defeated, um, you know, a lot of the current rankings that address Nashville now talk about how the city is attractive to um, immigrants. That people come here because of the diversity, they come here because of the economy, but Nashville has this edge to it now that other cities lack. And when you think about where that puts us in terms of competition, particularly with other southeastern cities, to be known as a city that is welcoming, open, a city that wants to have diversity, a city that wants to be part of this global uh, economy, that is a pretty darn good thing. Um, I've told the story before, you know, the, the World Cup soccer deal where, um, where, you know, Nashville, we made the cut. We were part of the U.S. team being submitted to, the, to FIFA to be considered uh, to host the World Soccer in uh, 2018 or 2022. Nashville was one of the American cities that would have been those host cities. Um, and I went up to New York um, in the final days when they were picking which countries were going to be the two hosts. And that process, we can all analyze and whatever. But... I was very proud to be there as part of the U.S. team representing Nashville, and I stood at a table uh, in, a, in a ballroom where Nashville stuff was, rep was shown. There's a, you know, pictures of Nashville and handouts, and the other 10 or 18 cities that were going to be part of this. And the FIFA delegation, which were from all over the world, walked around and kind of looked at each U.S. city. And I was thinking as all these uh, Europeans and Africans and Asians were passing by and, and, and looking at the United States and looking at Nashville, I was thinking, if that English-only thing had won, they would have had a restraining order to keep me out. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, we wouldn't have been anywhere near here. Because as a city that is based upon hospitality, that's based upon the future, if we don't embrace the outside world, we're not going to make it. But we didn't. We passed that test. So it was a great, uh, to me, it was a great moment. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. 
One of the things that's happening is in the last few months, and, and this is something that um, uh, probably only mayors worry about, but I like it uh, right now. National publications have really taken note of the momentum here in, in Nashville and we're in our rising on various uh, rankings as well. Just this year, uh, Nashville has been ranked number three, um, an expected boom town in America over the next decade by Forbes. We've been ranked number three um, as the best value, one of the best value cities in America by Kiplinger. We've been ranked the sixth best city in America for business and careers. We've been ranked number four as a brain magnet for college educated people. And perhaps most importantly, we work very hard to get this one, um, that esteemed magazine Rolling Stone says we are the best live music scene in America. That's big, that's big. I mean, if you, if you go out and you, and you recruit young people to come to your companies, I would start not with uh, Kiplinger, certainly. I, I, would, I would say Rolling Stone says this is the best live music in America. Yeah. I hope you all know by now that economic development is one of the three key, key building blocks to success that my administration focuses on every day. The success that we've had in, a, in this area is built upon the improvements that were achieved in two other critical areas, public education and public safety. I'll talk briefly about these areas because success there is directly tied to the continued growth of our community. We will continue to invest in public education and public safety in the next four years. Since I've been in office, we have increased the budget for schools by 72.9 million or approximately 12%. Uh, this year's school's budget was again fully funded. This has been particularly challenging this year with federal stimulus funding coming to an end and public school enrollment going up. I mean, one of the things that hasn't really gotten enough attention yet, and this is like a compliment to Dr. Register and the Board of Education, that every year for the past five, six, seven years, the enrollment in public schools has gone up. We're pushing 80,000 now, right, Jesse, in, in our schools. And, and, and that means that more and more people are, are turning to our schools as their source of education. In, in improving education, this doesn't happen o overnight, um, but it's an investment that is important and we're seeing, we're seeing things paying off. Graduation rates are up. I think the biggest news that happened in Nashville, not this past year, but the year before, which we have the statistics for, is that at every uh, comprehensive high school in Nashville, the graduation rate went up. Um, that is, that, that is what we're working on, and truancy rates um, have gone down, dropped by as much as 45%. As a city, we're making real progress. Um, when, you know, we have gone through a, a period of time where our city, our school system fell into corrective action for failing to meet academic standards. We still have challenges with test scores, but if you go into our schools now, um, you feel a sense of excitement. You feel a sense of optimism. If you go into our schools, you see that we are embracing reform, which we had not done um, for years. I mean, you, you've got Teach for America is, is embedded here and doing well. The new teachers uh, project is doing well here. Charter schools are flourishing. Uh, we have a great program with our public libraries. We've got uh, a new music program we announced this week, and, uh, and TPAC has a great program where Disney's coming in to, into our schools. I think Dr. Register is providing fantastic leadership. I mean, if you stop and think about what you want in a director of schools, what I want is somebody who's real smart, and he's real smart. And then what I think you really want, too, as a city, you want somebody who's direct, who's honest, who just says what needs to be said and says it in a straightforward, understandable way. And, we, and that's what we got. So we, so we are in a good position to continue to make progress. But I can tell you, for Nashville to be the city it is going to be, to one of the greatest cities in this country in this next century, the key thing we have to do is increase the number of college graduates, two-year colleges and four-year graduates who live in our city. We attract a lot of people here, we produce a lot of people, but we can do a lot better. And if, say, we double the number of college graduates living in Nashville, what that will do to our economy, how that will change economic development is almost unimaginable. And if we get our school system where people are making a decision about where they're locating a company or where they're going to expand their company based upon the fact that we, we want to be in Nashville because the public school system is good. That's where our kids, our employees' kids want to go. Uh, that's where we want to hire people. 
then there's no stopping us. So when we go through the, the challenges in the next three or four years and we talk about where we need to be investing our money, education is where we need to be investing our money. Public safety is always a priority. Um, during the past four years, we have hired over 350 new police officers, and we now have the largest police force in the city's history. Sometimes you're thankful for that, sometimes you might not be. Uh, but it is important if you stop and think. Our homicide rate dropped 25% from the year before, and the overall crime has dropped for the, past 20, for the past six years. But we cannot let our guard down. Uh, public safety remains a priority, and there are pockets of the city, there are areas of the city uh, where, where there are, there's far too much crime. Uh, there was a rash of uh, young teenagers uh, who, who were killed in the past few months um, that is totally unacceptable, and we need to do, to do better there. But our police force has very good leadership, um, and if uh, they write you a ticket, just know they're, they're working hard and doing the right thing. I mean, if you have a good defense, please, please come forward with it. Um, look, in conclusion, I wanted to say that um, the, the country and, and, and this continues to face challenges, the city faced challenges, and we will meet those challenges. Um, you know, four years ago, no one would have predicted uh, that we would have this great recession. No one would have predicted that we would have had the, the flood, the worst natural disaster that we've had in the city for 75 years. But we got through it all. And I think we got through it in a way that we're all kind of stronger now and the city's stronger now. I have an immense sense of optimism about the future. I really do. You know, and, and people can talk about how difficult times are now, but you know, we're all, most of us here are old enough to remember hard times. I, you know, I came out of college in the mid 70s when um, both the I interest rates were double digit, inflation was double digit, um, the U.S. was losing its pace in the world economy, we're about to fall back into, the, into a second rate power because of shortages of gas, and, and that all didn't happen. We kind of turned it around and got us back on the right foot. Right? We're in a unique position as a city. I think what's unique about Nashville is this, we can say without a doubt that our best days are still ahead of us. We can say without a doubt that if we stay bold, if we stay committed to the public good, if we stay committed to working together hand in hand to move this city forward, if we stay committed to public education, we can create one of the great cities in this country. We can create, because of our universities, because of our entrepreneurial spirit, because of our music, we can create a, a cultural, an economic beacon that will attract people from around the world and will be an example to others. That should be our goal. We shouldn't be timid right now. We shouldn't be crawling into a shell. We live in a place where we should be dreaming and we should be thinking big. Um, so thank you for this opportunity and I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you. One of the reasons that this was entitled uh, CEO Cafe was that it would be a relaxed environment that you could just have a conversation with the speakers. So if you ever wanted to ask your mayor a question, now's your, your chance. Anybody? There are many people in this room and probably in the community in general that from time to time have a good idea about what the city should be doing to uh, invest in its, reinvest in its community. Uh, what advice would you give to people in terms of how to proceed with that and, and some of the steps they might want to take to to bring ideas to the attention of the mayor's office. I mean, I'm actually fairly accessible. I get around a lot. Um, but email me and call me. Uh, we have a, a great staff. Um, you know, Matt Wilshire is here, who's our economic development person. Um, he's clearly interested in, in, and will respond to any ideas. Or, or call me, um, write me. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things that is great about the city. There are a lot of people who love the city, and I, you, you get that all the time. I mean, I think one of the, it got it this morning. When you go, I go out to a public event, and people may have varying opinions about, you know, what I've done and some of my ideas, but there is almost uniformly this sense that people love Nashville and they know it's a special place. Um, and, and I think that's one of our great uh, attractions is that people here do believe 
not in a sort of a conceited way or a bad way, but just believe we're just a little bit different, that when we, we just, we have a different future. And they think about things and they have ideas and I think we should, we, we need to hear them. Thank you. What is your vision for public transit in Nashville? Public transit, well, I mean, we're working hard on that in a variety of ways. I mean, one of the things um, is that I think we need to think continually in a regional, in a regional way. Um, you know, there are, um, Middle Tennessee is the economic engine for the state of Tennessee. And as a region, this is an incredibly strong region and we need to work in a cooperative way as much as possible. I learned when I visited the city of Denver several years ago this, about this mayor's caucus that the mayor there formed where he invited all the mayors of the surrounding counties and cities to come to Denver and meet with him periodically um, to talk about regional issues. And so I did what any good student would do. I copied the idea and just came back and did the same thing. And so we now have a mayor's caucus here that uh, Joanne Graves from uh, Gallatin is the chair of and we meet once a month or so and we talk about regional issues and the predominant issue we talk about is transportation. Um, I think every one of the mayors um, in rural counties and more rapidly developing counties all get that transportation is vital to the success of this area. That we can't have uh, the three interstates that are so key to our prosperity being constantly clogged up. You've got to have the ability of people to move in between the, the cities in this region. And so we have worked on transportation plans. Uh, there's been a plan done for the Northeast Corridor and going uh, to, to the South, Rutherford County and Williamson County. Um, those plans could right at this point either be light rail, they could be uh, bus rapid transit. Um, we have to make a decision as to what we're going to pursue. That will happen in the, over the course of the next year or so. And you know, one of the issues that's going to come up is, is funding. And the funding thing actually since the time I've been mayor has changed. I mean in the first couple of years it looked like if you could find a designated source of local funding that the federal government would be there with you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to help you. Um, I'm not sure that's going to happen anymore. I mean they may be there with something but it's not going to be quite as easy as it was for other cities to get this done uh, or regions to get it done. So we're going to have to think of a dedicated source of funding. Now within the county, and I'm a big believer in the bus system here. I try to ride the bus once or twice a week at minimum and uh, enjoy it. I, I want to encourage people to do that. We've got, um, you know, we've developed bus rapid transit on Gallatin Road. Uh, we need to do more of that. We have a West End Corridor study regarding transit that we'll get back in December, um, which will either recommend bus rapid transit on the West End or, or streetcars, I think. And then we have to make a decision about whether we're going to do that, and then we've got to make a decision about how we're going to pay for it. But I would put this in perspective. Uh, we talked a little bit in the opening remarks, the inter in the introductory remarks, about cities that we match up to, that we, that we compare ourselves to. And the two cities that I, I hear about the most and from companies that are looking at our area or from talking to people for a variety of issues about cities' appeals, uh, the two cities that we hear the most about are Charlotte and Austin. Both Charlotte and Austin started light rail systems in the last two years. Um, Indianapolis, another city that we match up against regularly, um, is, is in the, about where we are in terms of discussing it. Denver, which we're really not far out of their league, um, Denver is investing very aggressively, very aggressively in, uh, in a light rail system and making transit part of their city. I envision us having a transit system. It'll take time. I envision us being a much more walkable city and a bikeable city. Um, and, and I think all of that will we'll just continue to make progress as we can in the next few years. But transit is high on my list of, of, of priorities. In the area of jobs, I think it's great news that we have so many technology-based jobs here in Nashville and Middle Tennessee. But on the other hand, it can become a problem if we can't fill those jobs to keep our companies and keep companies here. We're going to be releasing our new report, and I'll be sending this over to you probably today or tomorrow for a preview, that we still have over 900 IT-related jobs here. I think that's great news, but I'd be looking to you to help us. Um, I'm thinking, this is a priority coming into my office, that 
we're going to look at a three-pronged strategy of certainly retraining displaced workers and also bringing people to Nashville, and I'm so happy that you, you are on board with that. And the third is looking at that pipeline with all our universities and institutes of higher education. But I would be happy to hear any other thoughts that you would like us to focus on as we look at stabilizing that number so that it's a good thing all the way around and we're not, um, it's not becoming a detractor for um, businesses to stay here and grow. Yeah, there is, um, uh, Ralph I'm sure has this top of his head, there's some, um, large number of IT jobs that are unfilled at any given time in, in Nashville. And one of our challenges is, is to have the IT uh, workforce here that can fill those jobs and also allow us to attract new businesses here. One of the things that comes up fairly regularly, I mean, every few months that we'll, we'll be in a competition with Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, Austin over a company and one of the things they're looking at when, in terms of making their move is the number of IT workers available, the amount of IT workers that the local universities are producing. And so I think one of the things we have to be very conscious of is increasing that number. That's where when I talk about increasing the number of college graduates in Nashville, either two-year college or four-year college, would play an incredible role in helping our economic development. And I think one of the things that the council could do, and we all can do, is work with our local universities and community colleges and colleges to stress the need to have a curriculum that helps address that. Uh, we need to have our local colleges and universities help, helping us produce people who can fit, meet, meet the needs of jobs that are actually there in, 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 a, in a changing economy. So that's a good question, thank you. I want to commend a great leader in Mayor Carl Dean for supporting public schools. Uh, and believe me, I feel the pressure from those comments about how we have to produce going forward. But this is a great partnership. We feel very strongly about what we're doing in the public school system and want to be a partner in this development of Nashville. Thank you for having me this morning. You've got some uh, job creators in the room, mm -hmm. uh, IT related and otherwise. Uh, you've got people who love Nashville in the room and uh, who work pretty hard. If you've got top ways that they can help you with your th top three objectives, what, what are those, where do you start? Well, there's, actually there's an, and there's been real improvement on this, there's a number of ways that private citizens and private businesses can help our schools. And start with the academies that our high schools are doing now. I don't know if you are, most of our comprehensive high schools now have academies that have a certain learning topic or almost a business topic that's being done there, whether it's IT or medical. Um, though, and they're built around the idea that businesses will come and help, that they'll be part of the education process, help actually educate in school, help set the curriculum, help train the teachers. Um, it's, a, it's a really a good, a good model that I think will prove successful. So anybody interested in getting involved with our high schools, and particularly on a business angle, these academies is a great way to do it. There's also great organizations such as Pencil, which does a fantastic job of taking businesses and other organizations and matching them up with schools and making the volunteer experience worthwhile. Um, and then there is, of course, um, the, the, the well-received and certainly appreciated financial route where there is, you know, ample places to donate money. I mean, one of the things that we've done, um, I think, in the last four years, and we've had to do it because of the economy, but I also think it's the best way to get innovation done. I mean, things like Teach for America, that's been paid for privately. I mean, when I went to New York to talk to Wendy Kopp about bringing Teach for America here, I, we weren't on her chart. I mean, she, she, knew where, she knew about Nashville, she knew we had some issues, but they weren't planning to come to Nashville. And I said, you know, she, this is like my first year as mayor, and I said, please come to Nashville. She said, well, you know, you're not on the waiting list. We'll be there in four or five years. And I said, I got, you know, I got a four-year term. I mean, that didn't do much for me. So, you know, so, so I came back to Nashville, and I, I did what really all our children have taught us this, how to really effectively advocate for something. I just came back here and kind of started whining. I, I'd call her and, and email her and tell her, you know, I you know, really need you. And she finally said, you raise the money, and we'll come. And so we had to raise like three million in two weeks, and we did. And we had to, had to pay, we're, we're still doing a couple million a year into it. 
uh, that needs support. Um, we need support for the, for the library program we got on that. I could talk all day about the library program, which is get, nothing uh, really makes me happier than talk about that program, which essentially is we've said that we're, gonna, we're breaking down the walls between the regular government and the, um, and the schools where, you know, we have this great public library system. Donna Nicely's retiring, but, you know, we should, uh, we should all stop and say thank you to her in the next couple months. But w our library system has been recognized as the best in the U.S. I mean, Donna got... I mean, I don't, I don't get invited to the White House. She does. She goes up to the White House and gets an honor for having the best library system. And they're going into our schools and changing the way we do libraries. Uh, John Ingram, the Ingram Foundation, made an incredible, really generous contribution this year to keep that going. And, and so that's another area uh, where you can help. But there are financial and volunteer opportunities to help our schools. And I would encourage you to do it because the message, I think that, and I give the chamber a lot of credit for this too, they've made schools a priority. The message of the last four or five years to me is that everybody in Nashville gets that education is the number one thing. And the more we have every citizen involved, whether you got kids in public school or not, the better. Um, you know, you polled, and I don't mean to say I'm superficial, but we do the poll occasionally. In 07, when I ran for mayor, the number one issue in Nashville was education. During the depths of the recession, the number one issue in Nashville was not unemployment, it was not the economy, it was education. 2011, I'm running for re-election. The number one issue in Nashville is education. People, and that's a good thing. People get it. This is the thing we need to be doing. And so, please, help. Thank you. We've, we've, had, four, we've had four years of... Um, speakers and many of them are, are on DVDs that are waiting out in the lobby. Uh, many of our speakers, Clayton McWhorter's office is represented here. He was one of our top speakers, Dr. Bill Halbert, uh, Mark Lee, Sherry Deutschman, who's in the audience, uh, several who have been speakers. If you'd like a copy of any of those, they're available free along with Bank of Nashville Coasters. Uh, uh, the uh, only time I think I heard the mayor speak was uh, on a Saturday morning at Hadley Park, uh, drizzling rain, um, and he had uh, personal trainers there to give us uh, fitness um, what, just before he spoke. I was sore for three days, but I was inspired from then on because the things I heard him talk about under that pavilion that wet Saturday morning was healthier communities, uh, safer communities, healthier citizenry, which was the information about the personal trainers, the accent on that, healthier school systems and healthier economy. Um, if that's the vision the, the mayor has laid out for us to take a, a note from the Bank of Nashville's, we're here to help you get there. Um, mayor, I think I can speak for everybody in the room. If that's the vision we're headed toward, we're all here to help you get there. That's a wonderful vision. Let's give him a hand. This has been the top attendance in four years and probably the top speaker in four years, I'm sure. Uh, but thank you for being here.